So this is the build for the um, Fly Navy group build. It's uh, hosted in a Facebook group called British Aviation and Scale. Uh, and I chose to enter that and um, build this kit as a bit of a mojo booster. It's the Airfix 172nd uh, Grumman Martlet Mark IV. Uh, nice little kit. A good amount of detail in the box and um, Right now we're just cleaning up the seams because there's quite tight tolerances on this kit so you've got to um, you've got to make sure everything sort of sanded up on the mating surfaces. Um, XX70 there after doing a few sort of uh, trials with the colour on the inside of the fuselage I've landed on that as being um, a good bronze green colour and assembling the rear bulkhead now on the cockpit which uh, it actually makes up for a very nice cockpit in this kit and um, it all goes together very well. All you've really got to do is add seat belts, which I do uh, from masking tape. And I'll uh, give you a closer look here at, uh, at the actual details. And as you can see, very busy for the scale, and um, you do get quite a lot of decals uh, included as well for the instrument panels along the side uh, walls and for the actual instrument panel itself, which um, is included with the rudder pedals attached and the gun sight on the top there. Um, that gun sight actually joins in to the middle of the fuselage and sticks up so I, I take that off at a later date and add it in at the end. And here you can see the XF70 has been applied which uh, goes on quite nice and it's, it's a very glossy colour and these parts here are for uh, well, they're going to be sprayed the um, sky colour which I, I use duck egg green which we'll see in a minute. Um, so first off I, I sprayed the sky colour on these parts and then masked them off and uh, sprayed the second part. And part of the fuselage needs sky on the inside there as well, just to sort of show through on those windows there at the bottom. And there's my colour of choice, uh, XF Mr. Colour 26. So here I've got the, this is, this is what makes um, the FX Wildcat kit, which this is, uh, into a martlet and you, you get a small sprue which has got these two, um, a new cowling and that spacer ring behind it. So you've got to join the spacer ring together and the new cowling uh, fits tidily onto it and it's actually quite good to use that cowling um, to true up the actual spacer ring as you join it. And then this gets... Um, a light grey colour on the inside which I've chosen XF83 there from the Tamiya range. And now on to the decaling with the instrument panel um, and the instruments down the side walls as well. Uh, these decals are extremely nice, it's cartograph printed and um, Airfix decals are, are pretty good now, have been for a number of years. Uh, they conform well, uh, very um, robust don't tear or anything like that and respond well to, to all sort of um, applications really. Uh, it sort of works for this scale, it is even even in 172nd scale these instrument panel decals are a little bit stark when you, when you look through the open cockpit. Uh, I did add some PVA glue on to try and give them sort of dials but it didn't really help too much. And uh, good detail there on the instrument um, sidewalls. And trusty microsole doing its work to make that all sink down. And now on to the engine. So where this spinner joins on with that hub there, uh, if you do it straight out of the box, it, it will fit if you really clamp it on. Um, and I guess this is designed to give you a spinning prop, but it wasn't any good for, for, for me. So I um, nipped that bit off there and then just glued it in and uh, that meant that that hub went on much nicer and I'd prefer that than a spinning prop.
This is the assembly all built up now for the undercarriage, which is quite a complex little um, unit. You've got to, it really does need to be all painted up separately as well. But uh, as you apply the, the separate parts, it does make the whole unit very um, strong. And then it attaches to the back plate here, uh, much like the real thing. It's, it's quite well detailed in there. And then that also gives you the wing spars and uh, the spacer for the fuselage halves. for a very um, detailed part. It's it's replicated very well from FX there. They could have cut corners with this uh, complex undercarriage, but the, they haven't, which is uh, great news. And once inside the actual fuselage half, you can see how all of that uh, piping and all of those parts come together and make it look really good. So the engine um, has got a lot of detail in there, so I decided to pick that out using various colours from the Tamiya range. So you've got um, rubber black there for the hub and those um, uh, supporting braces on the engine there, and then picking out copper um, in ignition leads there using um, the Tamiya copper colour. And just test fitting the cowling again um, to see what it looks like. I've sort of over accentuated the details inside there so that when it's in the cowling it shows through. Um, if I find if I'm a little bit too subtle it doesn't sort of come through the weathering, uh, certainly in this scale. And here are all the parts painted up and weathered and uh, pretty much ready to go. Uh, I do have to uh, buff out the windows a little bit there that are in the lower fuselage which I decided to do and super clear matte varnish which is my uh, go-to varnish there are two lumps or bumps on the side of the fuselage here that need to be removed presumably they're uh, present on a wildcat but not on a martlet so uh, in the instructions it says to whip them off which I do there you go sanded back flush nice soft airflux plastic it is good for um, removing and sanding back. It, it doesn't cause any problem from that point of view. And here you can see the glass, which just didn't go in too well. And where I've used Tamiya Extra Thin, it sort of uh, melted a little bit onto the clear glass. So um, I decided to sand this back now using varying grades of uh, sanding grit.
and at this point um, it's been pretty trouble free as you've seen in the uh, sped up part of the video getting the wings on here uh, it you just had to check the alignment it was a bit tricky in places uh, just to make I had to check what that sort of dihedral was as it sweeps up a little bit but that is what it's meant to look like and uh, as the horizontal stabilizers go on uh, they're great as one unit but you might be able to see here it's a little bit uh, wonky and that's because they're easily bent out of shape so you just got to bend them and, and make sure they're uh, back in line here we go with a primer coat just to check the seams and after a few bits of sanding and a bit of rescribing uh, I've just used a bit of Mr. Surfacer 1200 there just to get some final uh, more precise uh, filling and just touch up a few seam lines that are still causing me an issue and then they're sanded back and uh, any of the details are put back in with my trusty trumpeter scriber there which I find a bit better for the smaller scale because it's a much finer blade on that and um, you can also push and pull like that instead of having to drag the point you can actually use the blade on the end and press it into the groove uh, which can give you a bit more of a precise um, a joint if you want to do it freehand which I tend to do and now more application of the sky color from earlier so that's uh, Mr. Color 26 and then on the top we've got the first color which is extra dark sea grey I believe and I've used X XF77 from the Tamiya range and then tried to mottle the panels and break it up a little bit give it a bit of detail which I think has worked quite well it's three or four passes there with a finer airbrush just to give that effect and then we're on to the extra oh no it's not extra it's dark slate gray i believe I get confused with the faa colors and um, there's the pattern for the camouflage so i use white tack as it doesn't tend to leave any residue and just make the worms as uh, i'm sure you've seen many other places and uh, this all works pretty well just um, I, I make sure i try and press the worms down there quite well uh, my main issue I get with this is is making sure I'm following the pattern and um, as I mask sometimes I can mask the wrong part and then I end up spraying the wrong colour on the wrong side of the pattern and that's uh, that's happened in the past. I've even done it backwards I believe once or twice. So I try and uh, double check and avoid having any mistakes at this stage. And then using some uh, cheap uh, pound shop, I guess this is, uh, washi tape, which is, um, it, it's, it's a funny sort of tape, it's really good, it has uh, sort of two um, aspects to it, where it, it sticks well, but it doesn't um, stick down, it's not very tacky, whereas uh, the masking tape can uh, bite in a little bit, so uh, this works better for these sort of things, where you're not going to be plastering paint straight over it. And all you're really doing is just trying to um, fill some of the gaps and it's uh, very cheap it's like a pound for a roll of five of these rolls so worth utilizing that when you can just starting to apply the uh, the green slate color now and um, this is using a, a 0.2 needle and a, a H&S Ultra airbrush which uh, I picked up to try and get um, smaller needle size for finer work and I'm just trying to work on panels at a time and try and fill in um, like that instead of just plastering over it trying to kind of model each panel as I go um, and that gave a bit of a better effect uh, but you do have to remember at this stage or I do um, I, I like to spray into the white tack a little bit not too heavily and that uh, makes sure I get a good strong 
demarcation line. It can be a bit soft sometimes if I don't do that, I find. And then I um, have to then mask it up again and, and spray it, which can be a bit of a pain. So just working through the panels like this is uh, perfectly fine on an aircraft in this scale. It, uh, it's a pretty quick job and not too much of a problem. And then on to the decals, which uh, go on extremely well. I didn't have any issues with these. Um, they sunk down quite well, and then I actually cut through them into the panel lines to make them go down a bit further. And uh, using the microset, microsole method, uh, all went very well. And uh, th at this point we've uh, got everything sorted so the decals have been sealed in now with a gloss coat and we're ready to uh, start the panel line washes. And um, for that I use oils and I tend to mix my own colours to try and match uh, the colours that are on the aircraft. And so for the underside I use a kind of greyish, lightish colour because um, if you hit it with black or, or anything too dark it, it just stands out way too much. So. Um, that's what I'm using here. I think this is like a mix of Payne's grey and a, a light brown. And I'm just kind of going through again the panels just to try and fill things in. So at the minute this is a panel line wash. Uh, and I just run along and let it kind of wick through the panel using capillary action. Sometimes you've got to push it along, other times it just kind of runs on itself if you get the consistency right. And that tends to have a very nice effect. And uh, here you see it's a bit further now. We're actually on the panel lines on the fuselage and it runs down quite nicely on the side. Uh, and then when we get to the top of the aircraft, I change the color and then uh, blend it all in where these panel lines meet from the bottom to the top in the different colors. That tends to give me an all right effect. I'm usually pretty happy with it. And now you can see here we're doing a bit of a darker wash here on the panel lines on the top with the same kind of reason. Um, 
which gives a bit more definition. So I think this is raw umber I'm using using here just to kind of break through both colours. And then um, that gets blended when we're into the matte coat with uh, the next weathering stage. Uh, now also it's always worth mentioning um, it's very easy to forget any separate parts so uh, if you've got a canopy separate which I've got here it's uh, this is the time to remember that and uh, weather it all in at the same time because uh, it's very easy to overlook it and then it kind of stands out at the end and you can see I just run through uh, the different panels in the canopy and then once that's dry I think I left this to dry overnight um, then I just knock them back into the panel and try and clear them out of, um, put them into the panel lines basically, so where the oil is sort of stained um, outside of the panel lines, uh, just kind of use a bit of thinners and a cotton bud and uh, try and push it back into the panel lines, which I'm doing here, and that's all usually quite effective. Can't go wrong with oils, they always uh, reactivate and um, you can move them around. They don't tend to dry on too hard. And then it's super clear matte here from the MRP range, which I use here. And then after that, we're into the um, most effective part of the weathering, where I mix a few different oils and I'm, I'm trying to color match. So here I've uh, mixed a kind of grayish color, which gives me some nice tones. And I'm just running that over the extra, extra dark sea gray portions of the camouflage. And then just trying to work it around, not being, not trying to brush it on as such, trying to mottle it again with a brush. And um, it gives a nice effect and breaks up the colour and gives you some sort of tonal variation in, in the blocks of colour. And um, now it's just the final touches that are coming. So uh, I'm using a bit of clear packaging here to uh, make a clear piece for the gun sight, as I mentioned earlier. And I've also added a, uh, a rear view mirror there which uh, I noticed in some of the references so I just built that out of plastic card and glued it on and then final touches with the uh, lights so you've got red and uh, green on the edges and then I've just done a red light on the end painting with uh, silver and uh, finishing off with the clear colours and there we are I did add some um, aerial wires running off uh, of the horizontal stabilizers into the side of the fuselage and then along the, the aerial at the top and uh, I'm very pleased with the result. So as usual thank you for uh, watching the video and taking the time to uh, get this far and if you like what you see please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. If you have any comments uh, feel free to post them below because I always like to read them and uh, I'll see you in the next video.